the last thing that I actually wanted to leave you with is this text to speech output. Ah. So we just started. So the last thing that I want to show you or to leave you uh, is with this how to create animations. I mean, uh, how to do put this to an animation or that it can use be as a textbook uh, format. So and therefore is this uh, C1 animation and comments part. So it just shows the uh, basic text, right? It's not that some images in there, <coughs> some text, what to do, also with ch generated with ChatGPT uh, to boil and to cook something down. And the only thing, so our intention was when you, so this idea is borrowed from a PowerPoint actually, where you add those uh, those dots when, if you are in the, if you are in the uh, animation editor, so I always see those numbers. So and this is in our case, it's the same. So you simply have to add, like, when should something appear, not with the dots, but with two curly braces. So this is the idea. So I want to appear this as a, in the first step, and I want to disappear it probably at step two. So just, and then there is an image. This, this image should appear in the second step. So when I switch to the next one, right? Can you see this? So uh, it's actually so the the indentation is just uh, if you view this on a other markdown renderer, it's like uh, displayed and not like a paragraph. It's only like a, like a code. Uh, so it's also beautiful written, but you can also uh, uh, do it like this. So it's no difference. Only for the other markdown readers. So and we add this image probably. This should be the third one. No one of them should disappear. And this should be the fourth. So uh, it will grab this. Uh, uh, I say two color braces will only grab the entire uh, body of the content until the next. Uh, if it's more complicated, you can also put this like parentheses uh, into stars. Uh, it's not relevant at the moment, but we'll only take like the next complete table, the next complete paragraph, the next complete or separated image or gallery or what it is. So there's a fifth one. Okay, so you can repeat this. And the video, of course, want to have this. <coughs> video and this should be as the sixth so you see those dots appear so this is just like your visual but we are still in this textbook mode so it's actually it's doing perfectly but the video is not uh, I don't know where the YouTube video probably takes some time to pre-render now you can you or your students can actually switch to this presentation mode or to the slide mode actually present uh, slides mode will yes uh, they will show also the uh, the presentation mode will only speak out loud or if you turn off the sound it will uh, uh, leave it as it is so I uh, will speak it out loud or display nothing in this presentation mode you will show that to you later you will always see those comments also visually so depending we in most cases use this only in this presentation mode for our students but they have the possibility to use this also with their text that we have uh, where we describe these examples and stuff like this so to get them to use it for their private learning afterwards the more in depth but if i now go and see what we'll start it's computer science we start at zero so that's the bottom and if i go to the next one it will add this uh, into the place where we have actually uh, added this content into so this is the entire magic so we actually instructed to embed this content when we are on this specific step and this one should disappear at step two so this would be the next one and the image should appear and so and we can have our 
presentation quite easily see so this is the only thing that you need to do uh -uh. to have this now it's loading also and uh, take some time so that's it so that's i think it's not difficult to uh, do this and now for the text output for the spoken language so at the moment so at, by default it uses english so well use like this at the moment and if we want to have it like spoken out loud so the idea is to have uh, this sentence uh, should be read out at step one it's basically a similar syntax uh, but with a paragraph below and with those dashes around it just like this simple tiny description so this is the part it should be spoken out loud uh, that describes animation step one uh, you can do this then afterwards for the um, correct one animation step two animation step three so and you see okay i'll add the other ones and the order actually doesn't uh is irrelevant your entire text-to-speech output could be on top. The order of your animations could be totally scrambled so that the first one is here, the second one is the, down below uh, within your slide, the third one is in the center or something like this. It doesn't care. It's just like uh, what numbers you add and it will appear at this place. So I hit Control s So did I add sound to the, uh, to the zero step? There is no sound, actually. Today we are cooking alphabet soup and eating the following ingredients. First, chop the onions finely and then sweat them in a large pot with the olive oil. Then you place with water and as it starts to boil, bring the peeled carrots directly into the pot. Now I can go back again to the last First, chop the onions finely and then so to go the step the backwards oil. step forward actually and it's just the idea and what it uses it uses in this case chrome has a pretty good text to speech output actually uh, you have to test this for your chrome is pretty good but there are a few on windows uh, on mac that should be also quite good on android and you've seen this also in this feature phones it's the same it tries to the browser access as a text to speech engine that Chrome has its own, but the other one, text-to-speech engine, that's offered in most cases by the operating system. And if there is no one offered, uh, we also have a, a fallback. So in this case, we prefer browser-based TTS text-to-speech, but they are also like uh, using open service for this a responsive voice for the non-commercial. That's why we have to display it like this. And what you can... Uh, it depends. So this kind of might be because it sends uh, the text somewhere else, it, and uh, depending on uh, uh, how much the servers are using, uh, the text might become a bit, might be a bit, yeah, come later or not that in time if you're using the browser base. So prefer to use a browser that supports text to speech output. Otherwise, you can use this uh, responsive voice. And uh, as a last feature, and this works. Uh, offline so actually you can style this blah, 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 if you want to we have this translate with google so experimentally so it's not that google and the translation engine they are always aware of this uh, uh content or that your students are actually using it or something like this but if you click on this i want to translate the content experimentally and i don't have to the 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 the, the part that the, the script actually the code the code that is necessary is then afterwards injected into the little script so i don't know google uh, adds probably some more stuff to it and then we can change the language probably into let's try Esperanto french so wait a second 
uh, it already translated as you see so this part and if it, everything worked well so we also have this we can switch onto the uh, manual mode also you see you see the text is translated uh, but we have also methods if you're doing for example like a language course so you have, you mix up different languages you could also we are in total control of this what uh, google sees so we can also say you know, this part should be actually stay for example if you have a code block this should not be touched uh, by google by the google translator this part should be this uh, and this one should be not so there's just like an easy feature and if it, everything works well I'll check it to this one so you see the code is below and if we increase it a bit so it's better render it like this so it's another kind of visualization Ah. So this is just one opportunity. You have a fixed uh, piece of no, no, not of code. You have your fixed course actually, but you can use also the freely available available methods like Google Translate, text to speech engine to translate this probably so that one of your students uh, is using this language, one of your using uh, students this day this language, but you have created it in another one. You know? So just like of course the best way is always to translate the content to have it separately so that you have specifically changed it for the culture so it's like like we have learned so yeah we are strongly using these features to embed movies or explanation movies to um, unvoice its um, spoken text background and to write down the corresponding new text based on the script and due to the fact that I am now able to adapt the explanation to my didactical goals for programming and medical systems and so on, I have a very specific um, result when students watch the corresponding movies. But it's not necessary to produce them by myself. So if you're... Because you're from the... Uh, for the question part, for the quizzes, I just want to highlight this. So, you want to add some quizzes probably. So, just to check it, because I know these are also some elements to highlight this uh, speak out loud syntax for the comments, uh, for the animation steps. But here, this should be like a single choice. Like, uh, this is my quiz. So, okay, I directly translated it. So, I think if we want to get Google out, we have to simply reload this stuff. Uh, so, probably, so, very first, the correct one. So, this one. So, there are a couple of different types of quizzes that you can actually use. So, like, if you remember this, uh, brackets and parentheses, it looks like this radio button, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to make this like a checkbox, so we have a multi, multiple choice, yeah simply add those parentheses so they oops so that they look more like a checkbox two so now you have to answer probably this one check no that's the wrong one Okay, I got it on the first, uh, on the second trial actually. So, they actually, and again, you can combine this with the formatting stuff, with everything you have seen so far, actually, uh, uh, and there's even more to. And I think we have like five to ten minutes. I don't, uh, probably the last two things that I will leave, I just reload this, otherwise, uh, I'll go back to the Coding stuff, yeah. So now I've added, probably this was the idea or the intention of if we are doing this cooking course, and we are now for, I don't know what it was for three people, we need this amount of 
uh, water zucchini how will it change probably if the number of guests changed and so i added this javascript code and if you want to embed this so this is also official markdown language if you want to add this to as a code block actually that should not be that uh, should be visualized as a piece of code right you simply add three back ticks on top and to the end so if you control it you get this one the system is not aware of the, this is probably javascript another language requires another a syntax highlighting so we can just say it okay this is javascript you see the color of the variables and something like this has changed so and this was for us a couple of years ago also a starting point where we had something like an uh, we created a start to create a platform uh, for for coding and stuff like this and with a fancy editor which was way too complicated for our students and we created this task with some uh, code snippets they always had to copy and paste the stuff into the editor and then the idea was why not simply make those examples also executable so even if it's javascript code why not directly run this within the browser i mean the browser speaks javascript right and so we started with a by adding those script tags that you can apply basically uh, to quizzes to tasks to surveys and stuff like this and you can instruct when the user clicks on run what should happen actually and if i just and you you only have to think of this at input is just a replacement of the current code we run it like this and there's some what's the code ah so the code is wrong we have to to use the current syntax help pepper is not right So now it should run. This is a list of ingredients. There's a uh, our guest probably, and here happens a calculation for uh, const uh, name in ingredients and calculates uh, the the uh, amount that we need uh, for our numbers of guests for four people probably. So just, and if you run this, we get directly the result of. Yeah, of course, this was the basic receipt for alphabet soup. Uh, vegetable uh, broth water unit one liter okay let's change this to probably 10 persons didn't affect it at all because i have so I have to reload it again but this works only this is a problem of this uh, editor so in the other one just check this so in the other cases so the calculation happens uh, no. in this case i don't know why it's not calculating this but in your ordinary thing uh of course it obviously should work and what i want to show you what you but you have basically this version also here whenever you check the content uh, you generate like a new version in this case it is also stored linearly in the browser so also with the results your students can go back and forth modify the code experiment with it and play around with it nothing is lost they have their own local history uh, versioning and as you can see there's actually more to this so this is just for basic javascript tag but in this case i mentioned this is the last point uh, if you go to the this group website there's also like a list of javascript play list of templates that you uh, invite to explore so uh, we mentioned that, that the language is also extendable so you can add new features as you want to and there are some uh, for, for example if you want to simulate something like an uh, uh, avr uh, I'll do this programming. I just open this content on a new site. This is the same. The entire content and all the JavaScript probably that is required is stored in here. So in this, uh, the idea is that this course is used not only as a, a, a template uh, which you can expand, but also like something like a library. So the course itself actually should 
If you open this, the script, but you don't have to explain by itself how to import these features. And the only thing that you have to remember is if, uh, if there is some certain functionality in another uh, repository, in another course, in this text format, format stored, <coughs> the only thing I need to do is I need to like, import this into uh, like a usable script. I need the raw document, only the text format. So if I go back to my close this editor so I need to instruct clear script to import actually this functionality that is uh, embedded in there we use like these are HTML text that are not visibly when the site is rendered they're actually hidden we use it to add additionally so like meta information that you want to add additional uh, uh, yeah, functionalities so what I do now is just like whatever there is imported or defined within this course please import this into mine so I want to use the same functionality and it should be basically self-explaining so if uh, there's an example probably I can directly uh, copy and paste this uh, as it is done for live coding I will add this to the head So what we've done now, we have done an edit in the Arduino C program, like with this command, ABR sketch. So we don't, don't have to instruct it with a whole bunch of codes. So uh, like a script for JavaScript, or it can be even more complicated, but use this function that actually interprets or to do what is done there. So there's some compilation and then the sketch output is generated. So this is not fancy, actually it waits for text inputs like test generates the result is unknown so i have to add send probably this can be also more difficult where you add some kind of the script also uh, embeds anything of uh, html or something like this go back to my first slide So as you can see now, I just added these LEDs, for example, that are connected to some pins, but the students only see this part, and if you can run or experiment with the program before uh, sharing the, uh, as you see, uh, it's a kind of mixture, uh, easy way to add programming, but uh, this is just for AVR. You can add Python. We have another server for multiple programming languages there that uh, that runs the code and uh, sends the results back and it's JavaScript, it can be JavaScript, but there are also extensions. For, uh, the idea is everything that should be possible in uh, in the browser should be possible in LeaScript uh, with ease. And so, and you shouldn't be a programmer actually, if you want to have a certain functionality, it should be easy for you to implement this. So there's a, a specific uh, extension uh, language for this uh, that you can use. Otherwise you can use us we would create then these uh, uh, public repositories uh, where this functionality is actually embedded and you and others can simply import it like this programming it could be like for 3d visualization that we had or uh, this music generation or whatever you imagine or chemistry like visualizing some molecules or something like this so basically whenever there's some fancy feature it should be also possible to, for you as a creator actually to easy use this functionality, you know. But the idea is you start simple with simple text and then by the time you start to modify it, uh, change it, append it, other one, I feel like if you have uh, access, for example, if there's a developer uh, that can do fancy things and stuff like this, they can also support you within your course. So you can collaborate with others. So, but still the content is yours and it's written in a simple markdown language dialect. So that should be easy for everyone to learn. So, okay. If you have questions so far, or... yes. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I was just thinking towards the state end. I just feel that um, 
the compatibility of the um, layer scripts with other um, scripts such as Java, mm -hmm. as, such as Java, yeah. its compatibility with layer script uh, will determine its flexibility, for instance. Mm -hmm. It will also determine um, its functionality, accept acceptability, and of course, subsequent usage. Now, in your opinion, do you think this media script can conquer others? Yeah, uh, I would. Um, I always had this idea. I was. Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> but uh, the idea is just like, uh, I remember myself, like I uh, was a student, I was driving uh, to my was it practicum, uh, don't know, internship, uh, actually, and the, driving by car, and there was uh, this radio, the radio they were talking about Wikipedia. Oh, <laughs> Wikipedia, and they looked up the North Sea. Oh, there's a, it's a, it's a sea somewhere in the north of Germany or Europe. Uh -huh. Everyone was laugh laughing. Uh, so it wouldn't work. So there will still be encyclopedias in like 100 years, but now totally changed. There's no encyclopedia because we have the amount of all these contributors from all over the world that contributed in this one gigantic repository of knowledge. You see, but Wikipedia is great, but it's one document. You get one result, but probably the real script can be more interactive and you can use it for various types of audiences like you can do a course for kids you can do it for uh, adults for students on different levels and stuff and like like this so you have this versioning that's not that uh, possible like on wikipedia probably but i hope in the future we have something like a a language uh, for for a simple language for course creation like html standard in the browser so there are no other competitors actually and probably the script could be something or something similar or easier to use also for education so this is our hope and our goal so marriage suspect yeah. other scripts in the near future yeah of course so we try to be open so how how secure is the real script structures uh, secure, it means uh, as you can do uh, the, since it's basically the only thing as we use it, you store it within your or it runs only within your browser it can not communicate to other services actually but you could implement something like this but you have total control, you can check actually the pieces, the imports and what codes they are using, they are also uh, open source and the only thing that you can't access actually from the script is the uh, internal uh, the database so it's not allowed for example for a script if I want to do a JavaScript example that accesses the internal database where your content, your progress, where your personal, not personal data but uh, the course you have attended everything is stored uh, this is not possible to access from another script probably and yeah, this is the only restriction, but so yes, this uses the security features of each browser mm -hmm. strongly. And you have no chance to break out this uh, sandbox established by the browser environment. Sometimes it would be helpful mm -hmm. if you intend to control an uh, outside device or something, yeah. but it's not possible. We will later demonstrate how we can connect with external environmental setups or experimental setups. Um, but there we have to integrate another feature and chain of features. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think also uh, when I um, you know, saw the scripts last year in Africa. I thought like wow, well, what's interesting is that everyone tries to have like a piece of structure in their university management system, the student information system, and so on. And uh, the advantage of this script is actually that you don't need any infrastructure. You don't need anything else in a browser. And the browser is available even on an old phone. So, so and uh, yeah. I found the model. And if you want to add additional services, for example, a test, 
that you will combat them with a cold on them, who would fall in or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, are we doing that like with an embedding? So an external test, if you want to, you know, because now we sort of more for the you know, self-checking, also they do check yeah. if you have also. But if you wanted now to add an assignment to so, uh, raise people, uh, so actually this I know of persons that have done this uh, it's not our primary intention uh, but uh, here's an example for example of a uh, Damien Belois I guess he made a YouTube video by using the exporter so he up how to upload this so there's also more documentation this how to upload the script course into your local uh, Moodle in this case and then all the uh, 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 states the result are actually stored within the Moodle, so not in the browser base, but entirely within the Moodle. So they then they have to access. Uh, okay, the video has some problems. Probably you can try it later. And uh, I would leave you now for the moment. You have done this editing now in this uh, uh, online browser, basically. If you want to download your code, uh, you can do this also like. Uh, as a zip file actually so they store it on uh, your browser and put it somewhere else but there are also other uh, things that you can do so the live editor I've mentioned this but you can use any kind of text editor actually any kind and there's another tool that's called uh, a dev server you can install this for uh, Windows Mac OS and others and simply point it to the directory so you're using your editor you uh, where you edit your files at your images and stuff like this and whenever you hit control save and the dev server checks this oh there has been an update and actually reloads or opens this within the browser so that you can also locally uh, or even with your features that your uh, IDE or your text editor editor supports at this another one is this of course the VS code there are plugins for VS Code, so it's the basic coding editor, and there are also plugins for the inline uh, editor in VS Code, so that you can directly, GitHub, Sebastian will show this, and later just uh, install this plugin locally, also add some other plugins for cooperation, and then create your courses there on the GitHub, uh, what to say, on the GitHub browser, VS Code mobile. And another one that I've attended so far, and uh, this also be another one as an alternative as an online editor you can use now the, also the stack blitz which is pretty much the same as vs code but uh, offers you more comfort uh, when it comes to interact with the uh, preview and then zip file is also to this one. a zip file contains all uh, the content and if you can see in this you can also of course here if you explore this later, the carton image, first thing, I use this Ingla image for example, and so we can upload this. So you can also upload images into the browser, also videos. In this case, they are stored, uh, but uh, they are, in our case, they are renamed. But if you download this also as your, in your zip file, Probably then all the content and course is also there. So just an easy way for all the was for us an easy way to develop this uh, online editor to get first step into the script to start with your projects to store them uh, locally. So as you've seen, all the courses so far that I probably have created or where I've made some experiments are just stored here within the browser. I can or even if you make notes something like this. So so it's an easy way to create this. So this is so far for editing. Now Sebastian will uh, quickly uh, go to the benefits of using something like a version control system, GitHub. And what's, yeah. Sorry, we have a demo for what we have done already. Sorry? What we have done already. Yes. I've recorded this also. Uh, I will ask the Ulan Africa, who I'll try to upload this in the future, is the master of learning Africa.
pohody viete, že sa tam môžete aj na lavčiu, alebo tie šerve si môžete aj na lavčiu. Viete, že sa tam 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 môžete aj na lavčiu. Open educational resources. So we received an idea uh, how to extend textual formats by syntax information that help us uh, to implement a corresponding and interactive material. And we saw that, of course, we can use different editors for this purpose. Just from my experience from a long term LIA script user. It's more helpful to work with VS Code than with a live editor if you have a long-running project. For instance, a whole lecture for one semester. It's much more supported your interaction with the editing system um, in professional environment than to work in a yeah, short-term uh, online editor. But what's the problem we have at the moment? Um, related to our expectation. How can we cooperate with uh, other authors? We need to find um, opportunities to integrate my colleagues from the department uh, for generating courses that mix different perspectives on one problem. And how can we keep track of changes? I would like to know at which point in time one of my colleagues made changes. Probably they are not perfect. And I would like to reverse it. This means I have to organize a permanent control about the state of our open educational resource and uh, how to handle it. And Andre already mentioned that we discussed a lot about the question of open educational resources as a huge community, but they do not understand that most of the problems are solved from computer science perspective. If the guys from Open Educational Resources departments talk about we need a versioning system and we need some issue tracking, we need some mechanisms that allow us uh, to adapt or to bring the stage of our document to a previous session, these are things that in are completely usual in open source software development. So I would like to um, centralize your um, related to some aspects we can use based on media script as a piece of document in combination with methods from open software development to have to, to keep uh, to meet the requirements mentioned by the UNESCO in 2002 when we talk about materials that can be shared that can be adapted that can be reused in all these um, expectations the corresponding document includes what's the benefit the great benefit is if we talk about a general computer science course cs100 we receive on 100 millions of implementations. Teachers try to provide motivating, attractive materials and spend a lot of time in implementing things that are presented for just 10 seconds, 10 minutes in a year. And afterwards, no one uses uh, immense efforts. So the question is, how can we bring teachers, lecturers from different companies, from different um, in relations together to avoid situation that one specific, very general course is generated 2,000 times per day. Students and teachers should focus on the specific interaction and not on generating materials. And the examples of Andrew, when we saw some interactive code examples this is one general pattern i used in my lectures i the students have to prepare the basic stuff based on materials from network from net from movies uh, tutorials and so on and afterwards we discuss on a code we discuss on code, about code that is embedded in a lear script example 
And I asked, hey, what do you think about this solution? Is it a good one? So we want to talk to each other and try to find a solution for a given problem interactive. Yeah, so the style of teaching can be changed based on open educational resources. What are uh, potential uh, solutions? And Andrew already mentioned Wikipedia. I just want to repeat the idea. If we take a view to uh, the end, to the um, information given for Kigali in Wikipedia, I guess most of you are aware that we have a complete view on the history um, of the document. We can recognize who was responsible. Oh, Roman 178 um, deleted 140 lines and he added some uh, new information. In this way, we have a complete access to all setups that in history was provided for a specific topic. That's fine. And we can now compare them, uh, understand which changes were um, submitted. And this is important if we talk about teachers, lecturers from universities, then they have their own interests. If we talk about CS100 course, one person intend to focus on object-oriented, a specific paradigm in computer science. But another one, yes, um, it would like to address the general idea, but not focus on it. So we have different versions, different perspective on a similar matter, and we have to ensure from technical perspective, from content perspective, that this becomes possible. This is an idea why Wikipedia as a concept cannot be cope with the ideas of open educational resources. Here we have just one round truth, one um, collection, one document. But open educational resources will cover many implementation of a similar course, but with different focus. What was the great success, as Andrew mentioned? Hey, the general idea was that they used a simple context description language. And if we take a view to the editing mode, we very fast, we will very fast recognize that this is again a markdown syntax after some additional information. And you probably recognize that there are many um, similar notations you learned in this tutorial embedded in markdown uh, in, in this Wikipedia documents. Second point, an integrated editor, and we try to copy this idea by providing the live editor, as Andrew showed me before, but it's just the entrance, from my understanding, to the Lia script world. Afterwards, you, you are free to choose your own professional editor that supports you with many uh, features you probably know from your daily work. And it's possible to use an, a version management system um, in um, Wikipedia, and we, again, want to copy this idea. Okay, how can we transfer the idea of um, learning uh, versioning on LIA script? We have to recognize one important message from the tutorial. A Lear script document is just a text document. It's not a binary representation. It's not a program. And in this way, a markdown or a Lear script document can be handled like a piece of software. So a software can understand, other software can understand, oh, someone changed line two and three, added line seven, eight, and we have some changes related to references on another position. Yes, it's important, an uh, important difference. And we have a strict focus on the content. If you compare the syntax of a Lear Descript document, it's much more reduced compared to an HTML representation where a lot of text are um, spread out in the whole document. It, it limits the readability and, of course, the version management system. So at the end, we have a perfect starting point to 
uh, understand what are the individual changes. And um, yeah, of course, then I get a notice about the changes from two authors and I have to decide how to merge them. Should I focus on my adaptations or probably I recognize that the other author has a better idea at this uh, point uh, in our content? Yes, uh, of, of course you have an opportunity to limit the access um, for, for, yeah, for the person, of course. <laughs> And um, of course, we intend to revert versions in, in case of our con uh, colleague made some adaptations that are not helpful from our uh, perspective. And I don't like uh, to. I, I just copied an image from or an animation uh, to illustrate. A, the capabilities of Lean script and to illustrate the reuse of um, some content that is given in our software developers course at university. It just illustrates that um, the development of a software means that we have different um, commits or different versions and we build up a chain of such versions that are connected to each other by knowing the differences and this means each developer each author of a script document transmit a new version to a central platform and everyone else can download can merge the information with its own state of the document but this is automatically done in most cases the merging algorithms find a solution to fit by different stages in the document, by different adaptations in the document, and to um, generate a new but um, joint version on it. Yeah, and in our computer science course, we now would discuss how can I run this pipeline, how can I revert changes, how can I um, adapt the context. And this again in an animated idea, git add git. And, and new version and again we see the how comprehensible animations uh, are for the intended discussions i would like to um, have with my, our students here it's a very simple example we discussed in such an interactive manner how i can reword uh, reset certain projects it's not important for our discussion here but it gives you an overview about the opportunities we have when combining the script and tools that are very common in software development so that means that yes people also yes people also allows for instance, in the university, um, we do what we, there's what we call Coursera, Coursera and um, our, sorry, the free based materials in Yeah. We assign them to Coursera, we pay certain fee by day. Yeah. Uh, their course material, they need to go to a day. We do what we call marketing to do certain sort of things in our own materials. Yeah. So this allows that to yes. compatibility. Compatibility. Yeah. Um, and we had an image in the very beginning where we have the Lear script documents mm -hmm. and then we can transfer them by an exporter to different learning management systems. We can use the document to collaborate with other lecturers, merge them to have a new version, probably to correct some aspects, um, to generate some 
um, applications for mobile devices, there are many opportunities starting from a simple text document. This is an important part. And these simple text documents now can be monitored by our versioning systems. So you can select certain parts and certain versions according to your specific needs. It's not necessary anymore that you write down the whole material for a 90 minutes lecture by yourself. No, you just copy the corresponding parts, reference or authors, of course, and want to mention them, and then it can be used. So this is a open source idea, but as I already mentioned, some companies have, of course, closed uh, repositories um, with specific content they do not want to publish. Yeah. So, so, so that means, uh, as you said, the parts that I'm interested in, I can remove it, acknowledge you, and expand on it. Yes, of course. Yes, yes, don't my property out. Yes. Yes, it's, it's, you are more flexible in this way. You, you, if you choose, according to the licenses, all of these aspects, parts from other courses and adapt them according to your specific needs. If you have a computer science course for non-computer scientists, of course, the focus is completely different. But some of the examples you use for discussion there can apply in this course um, corresponding. Yes, so, so the material becomes more maintainable, reusable, as the UNESCO mentioned in their idea in 2002. I just want to address some of the birdies. It's not possible to bring you on a level of a professional Git developer, um, but just to have an idea how the versioning system is working. So, the question of what if Yes, of course, of the yeah. 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 it has to apply, <laughs> but but it's the same. But the same method in all materials. Of course, if I reference a document or a photo from Wikipedia, I have to mention the. In the best case, I have to mention the um, author correspondingly to the given information, but. Many authors are very happy if their material is in use. It's yeah, yeah. 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 so yeah. yeah. And we have to hurry up. Okay, to take a coffee. Yes. Others, please that we can do Okay. <laughs> if there are some urgent appointments, <laughs> let's do a very short break, probably 15 minutes, yeah. and then we meet us again. And afterwards, you are a Git expert. Yeah, I promise. Nice. <laughs> wow.